Hello and welcome, Sunin here and the tutorial you are about to watch is from my computational thinking in Python course. It seems to be presently on sale at Udemy, but you could have it for free. Yes, totally free. All you have to do is solve the upcoming challenge either in a different way from what I did or in a more efficient way. So have fun with it. And all you need to do once you solved it is post it in the comments and I'll send you a free coupon later. Hello and welcome. In this challenge, you will be asked to optimize your prime number generator. And what I mean by that is that we're going to learn how to time how long it takes your program to produce uh, all the primes under 10 thousand and whether your program looks just like mine or completely different or you used functions or not it doesn't really matter everything I say is still going to apply to yours but just in case you're interested in following along with my exact code you can download it from the solution of the previous challenge so what we're gonna do here is we're gonna enter um, the first you know maximum number 10,000 and we're gonna produce the first 10,000 primes And it's going to take a little bit of time. And there they are. And now we can check if it's the correct answer. I think we should have 1230 and len prime list 1230. Okay. So our objective is going to be to time how long this takes. And once we can time it, then you could be set off on a challenge to optimize it, to make it faster. And what we're going to do to time it is we're going to import the time library. Import time. And now we have um, access to essentially time.clock. Now what this does the first time you call it, it, it sets a, it, it's like it starts a timer. It sets a clock at zero. However, because uh, of Python's eccentricities, we're not going to get zero. When we execute it, we're going to get a super tiny number. And the next time we execute time.clock, we're going to get the time elapsed from the first time we executed it. So you can see that this is some kind of a zero. And every time we invoke time.clock, it is time elapsed since the first time we called it. So the next one's going to be 20 something and so on and so on. So the simple way is uh, the simple way to figure out how long a program takes would be to use time.clock exactly at the point where the processing starts. So after we've taken in the number and uh, the prime algorithm starts crunching and uh, then take it after subtract the two values and we know how long the program took. So let's see in, in my program here, the one that uses functions, everything is done inside this all primes function because all primes essentially uh, goes and tries every number from one to a thousand and does the factor count on it. And if the factor count is two exactly, then it appends the prime list. So essentially everything takes place in this one line of code, it, all of the computation. So in yours, it'll probably be different. You'll probably be putting, um, I'll show you. So you can go something like this, tick equals to time.clock. And down there we can have talk equals to time.clock. And then you can print time taken in seconds that uh, plus string or should I say like that string tick or talk minus tick so the time in the end minus the time at the beginning and you add that as a string so I think this should do it I think this should tell us exactly how long the program takes and I'm going to run it twice just to see if if it's like taking the same amount of time every time or there's some variation so maximum number 10,000 oh la la the error time is not defined yep we didn't import the time library import time 
Let's try this again. 10,000. So be sure that you create your tick after you have entered, after um, you've entered the input. Otherwise, if it was above here, we would have already taken four or five seconds um, before we hit enter. So here we go. Man, it's taken a while. 7.8 seconds. My computer got a bit louder there, so it clearly takes a while to crunch. Okay, 10,000. Let's try this again. I just, I'm just curious how close it is going to be to 7.8 next time. Okay, pretty close. I've actually run this in the past, and it's been up and down by about 5%, but so I it wouldn't be surprised to see 7.6 or maybe 8, but it'll be pretty close. Okay, so now we figured out how to measure this. And make sure, as I said, that you put the stick and talk wrapped around your processing, not before you enter the input. Otherwise, you'll include the waiting time. And uh, now it's up to you. What can you do to make this faster? For example, what can you do to not count in? even numbers because they can never be primes and as far as having a list maybe you can start with a list of all numbers and then deduct the non-primes rather than building it there's a lot of different ideas feel free to google prime number algorithms and make sure you come up with something that you really do understand because this is what we are trying to achieve in this course we're, we're trying to create algorithms of our own that make sense to us all right Best of luck with this challenge. Hello and welcome. We're going to be looking at some ideas for making this algorithm a little bit more efficient. As you can see, we got 7.8 seconds. And as I said, the first thing we can do is when it comes to the list of all primes under a certain number, we can simply start counting from one to three to five and we can simply ignore the even numbers because we know they're not prime and to do this in python you just need to go comma two in the for loop range right there so let's do that and just that and see how much that improves things and we're going to need to also check if we have 1230 primes so 10,000 Time taken 3.39, we halved it. We halved the time taken. So LEN, I think it's called prime list, prime list. And because we'll be using this again, I guess I'll copy it. 12.29, we are missing somebody. Aha, right there. Two was not considered. We went from one to three. So I guess we need to just append two. And uh, two, two, two. Now it's taken. All right. So let's um and let's just make sure that it's 2 that's missing. Yeah, 1 3. So I'm pretty sure it's going to be fine. And let's just run it again and see if we come up with um 10,000. 3.92 last time. See, as I said, it could differ a little bit. 4.03. Guys, I guess it took a little longer because it had one more prime number. There we go. Two's there, and the length should be, if I remember this, it should be 1230. Beautiful. Now, now that we're actually um, taking out the even numbers, I guess... Um, If we only have odd numbers, you can't get an odd number when one of its factors is even. You see what I mean? As far as factors go, this i is testing for factors. We're going to have no even factors, none. Because think of any odd number, like 21. Okay, you can get it going 3 times 7 or 21 times 1. But when, with an odd number, even 9, 3 times 3, whatever, 15, 3 times 5, there's going to be no even numbers as its factors. So this lists through all the possible factors. This lists through all the possible numbers. 
If all the possible numbers are odd, then all the possible factors have to be odd. And we can simply go comma 2 here and run it. 10,000. Woof! And len prime list, 12. So we have just improved it by a factor of 4. This is pretty impressive. So as far as optimizing this particular algorithm, I think we have pretty much maxed out. This is, uh, this is as good as it gets. However, if I wrote a brand new program and um, if it wasn't based on taking all the factors of a certain number, if instead of checking for all the factors, it gave up when it found the third factor, um, maybe we could get it to be even a little bit faster. So I'll pause this here and then I'll come up with another um, algorithm that I'm going to try to make faster than this. But either way, I'm going to show you another way to discover prime numbers, not just by finding all the factors. Okay, I just um, saved this as a different file name so that I have the previous one as a solution. So I'm just thinking, all of this can remain the same. Max num, tick time dot clock, all primes. Um, so if this stays the same, all I'm going to need to change is essentially that statement. And um, here in the factor count, I'm just going to change that to something called prime test and the idea with the prime test is we're going to start with the assumption that we're going to have a boolean we're going to start with the assumption that the number is prime prime equals true so we're using booleans in this answer prime equals true and factors equals to zero now if factors was going to go more than zero. I don't think we need factors. Let's just say if if we were to discount the possibility of one being a factor, right? So now we're going to go, we're not going to go all the way to test num plus one because the number itself is not going to be a factor. So we're just going to go from two to test num. So all of a sudden we're going from two, like if, if we're testing a, a range of 10, we're going from two to nine. So 10 and one as factors are gone. And if we have a remainder, then prime equals false. And we can simply return the state of the prime. Okay. Um, and we left it so that we're not testing even numbers, which means that we'll be skipping that there as well. So what are we going to do here? Well, we're going to have a different if statement. If, okay, we're going to have to do the prime test. If prime test of I, equal equals so prime test will return either true or false equals to true then add to the prime list prime list or capital L list dot append I okay so we're still applying the shortcut of only having candidates from one, three, and we were adding two from one, three, and onwards. Um, I don't think one needs to be a candidate. And if, uh, if two is already added, we can start counting from three. Okay. I don't know. I think, I think this is going to work. Okay. Here we go. 10,000. Ah, okay, we saved only a little bit of time. As you can see, 
once you uh, eliminate half the numbers from your factor candidates and half the numbers from your actual original prime candidates, you've eliminated roughly three quarters of the computation and you get one quarter of the result. This has also saved us time with the factor finding, but it didn't save that much time. All right, improving from this point on is of course possible and I would encourage you to try and do that. I'm going to be looking for student programs to show in this course, but I'm going to stop here because as far as showing you algorithms that are very easy to explain, um, I think this is a pretty decent place uh, to stop because all of this, it's pretty neat, it's pretty short and it makes sense. All right, see you in the next challenge.